what you're going to get. Border garlic fight. Go, go, go. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? It's Coach Ryan Knapp, and this is going to be a fun video because this is going to be a how-to. And specifically what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you, using me as an example, how to personalize your heart rate zones. And we're going to do that by doing a simple lactate threshold test. That's going to take about 45 minutes or an hour to do. Um, so I'm actually before that test. So I'm going to talk about this. I'm actually going to go out and just do the test, come back home, and then I will show you how to take the data and how to calculate your heart rate zones. Now, why is this important? If you want to use heart rate training, you have to use personalized zones. If you look at Maffetoni, look at these other methods that use this formula that you can use to calculate your zones. That's okay. But the reason that they use say 220 minus your age and all this other stuff or 180 minus your age and all this other stuff is because the numbers worked and they had to check those numbers. They had to check these heart rate zones based off actual numbers or else they wouldn't have a clue if it worked. So there's no reason why if you're going to do heart rate based training that you're not personalizing your zones. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's not really that hard to do. Um, we'll use a little bit of a calculator. I'll make that calculator available for everyone online and they can go in and do it. And then we're going to be good to go. Now, why are we going to do this test or what sort of test are we going to do? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a simulated lactate threshold test. Okay. You might've heard the term lactate threshold before. That's no, you kind of saw the end of my border collie pace walking around. I'm always in the crate, the other one. Um, so lactate threshold. So why is lactate threshold important? Lactate threshold is important if you understand that basically your lactate threshold, so it's, it's measured in beats per minute, is essentially the spot where your body starts to redline. And it redlines in, in, like a, in a car for a lot of physiological reasons. And basically what happens is your body starts to produce lactate, which is this stuff that it uses for energy. And when there's too much of it, it can't use it all for energy, so it starts to have some byproducts. And those byproducts, and, and some other processes that happen cause your muscles to fatigue. So essentially, once you go over your lactate threshold, um, your performance starts to decrease pretty rapidly. Um, and it doesn't just decrease like, like linearly, it'll kind of decrease, decrease, and all of a sudden you hit a wall and you're like done. And we've all kind of had those on runs, right? Where you're running and all of a sudden you're running really hard and then you're like, no, I can't go anymore. And so that's what happens with, with this accumulation of stuff um, that we need to worry about. So we, we use lactate threshold to set our zones because it's a really good line to make sure that we're staying below and make sure that we're training, um, training with in regards to so that we're staying below that. And if we need to go above that, we can go above that for say like some faster intervals and then we come right back down. So we're going above those for the intervals, we're recovering, coming back down and we're playing with that line. Also that line can change. So you can improve your lactate threshold as you go. And this is a test that you can do to actually just prove your fitness. So you can run this test every six or eight weeks, possibly fluctuate your heart rate zones, but also see how much faster you're getting at it. So what is this test going to entail? What am I going to go out and do here in about 10 minutes? What we're going to do is we're going to take, it's going to be about an hour. You can either do it on the treadmill or you can do it outside. But if you do it outside, you want to have it on a flatter, flatter um, bit of terrain or flatter bit of running. And you want to make sure that you're not stopping. So if you live in like a big city, like living in Boston or living in another city, you want to make sure you're not like crossing tons of streets and having to start and stop. You want to be able to, to go pretty flat. So like for me, I'm going to run down, I'm going to run from my apartment down to the Charles, which will be my warm up, And then I'll run along the Charles on the bike path and I won't have to worry. You can do it on a track. You can do it on the treadmill. Here's what you're going to do. We're going to warm up for about 15 minutes. Back up. Before you do anything, you're going to wear your heart rate monitor and you're going to wear your GPS watch. I have had people do a lactate threshold test without a heart rate monitor before, so you don't get anything. What we're going to do is you use your heart rate monitor, you put it on, and then you're going to warm up for about 15 minutes. So in that warm up, you're going to run your normal easy run, your normal easy pace, and then you're going to throw in a couple strides or a couple surges to like 10K, 5K pace just to kind of wake your legs up because you're going to be doing a little bit harder running. 10, 15 minutes of that. So for me, I'm going to run down. It takes me about, it's about a mile and a half to get to the Charles from here, so that'll be my warm up. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure your heart rate monitor is, is running and then you're gonna either hit the lap button or, or you know, somehow delineate it um, within the workout. If you can't do that, it's not a big deal. We'll, we'll do it afterwards. And then you're gonna run for 30 minutes. And in that 30 minutes, you're gonna essentially run a pace that you could run for about your 10K. So for most people, it's basically half hour to hour pace, which is roughly within the middle of your, um, uh, of your 10K pace. Uh, and you're going to run that for 30 minutes continuously. 
So when you, when you go from the beginning, when you go from that warm up into that, into that pace um, or into that 30 minute bit, you're going to want to make sure that you're, you're gradually increasing it. Because what happens with most people is they try to crush the test. So they go easy and then all of a sudden they go really hard and they went too hard and then they have to level out. I want you just for that first 10 minutes of the 30 to just gradually kind of increase in the 10K pace, feel it out. And then you're going to run, you know, continuously for 30 minutes. When you hit 30 minutes, you can stop and then you can cool down however you normally cool down for about 10, 15 minutes um, and then come back. And then when you come back, we're going to take the information that you have and we're going to do the second part of this video, which is I'm actually going to show you how to calculate your zones. So I'm going to head out here, do the test, and then I will be back and look a little bit, uh, a little bit more wet because it's raining outside in Boston. Um, and we're going to go ahead and do the test. I'm actually going to wear two heart rate monitors so I can um, make sure that my zones are right and I can make sure that the data is right because I don't really trust the new one I have. Uh, all right, so I'll be back in about an hour. What's going on, guys? It's Coach Ryan. I'm back. Uh, I went out, did the workout for an hour, and now I'm ready to look at some data. And so I haven't even looked at this data yet. I've just loaded it up so I can show you how we walk through it. So I did record with both the TomTom Tom Runner Cardio and my old reliable Forerunner 305, and they actually uh, came out with the same distance, and it looked like the same heart rate, at least from what I saw when I was checking it in during the run. Uh, so we'll go from there. So yeah, we're gonna go through and uh, do the analysis now, and I'm gonna switch to a screen recording. Now let's go ahead and look at the data. This is Training Peaks. Uh, this is what I use to serve up all my uh, workouts to all of my athletes. So I loaded in both files. This is the Garmin and this is the TomTom, Tom, and I'm gonna use the Garmin file. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit expand, and it's gonna give me all of my data. Now, like I said, the, we're gonna look at the middle 30 minutes, but specifically, we're gonna look at the last 20 minutes of that 30 minute chunk. So I warmed up till about 13 minutes, and then so I'm gonna go to 23 minutes here. So 23 minutes, and I'm gonna drag out to roughly 43 minutes. Uh, right about there, okay. Yeah, gives me 20 minutes and seven seconds, that's fine. And it'll get me exactly what I need. So in 20 minutes, and seven seconds, I went 2.79 miles. I averaged 175 beats per minute, and my pace was seven minutes and 11 seconds. So now, with that information, so this was the warm up, this was the first 10 minutes, this is the last 20 minutes is what you want, and then that's just cooled down. With that number, 175, I can go in and I can calculate my heart rate zones. So I put in 175, but you can put in whatever number you have, and now it'll give me your heart rate. So this is, this is my heart rate calculated. And I like to use Joe Friel's lactate threshold numbers. Um, I respect Joe Friel as a coach and all the work that he does with heart rate training. So I like to use his numbers because in the, in the experience that I have using with them, uh, anecdotally, they've been really helpful. Um, and I feel like the numbers have been spot on. So let's talk about these real quick. We'll talk about heart rate training a little bit more in another video. Um, but uh, zone one is gonna be your recovery runs essentially. So anything below 149 is gonna be your recovery. Zone two, this is the bulk of your training, this conversation pace. You're gonna sit between, I'm gonna sit between 149 and 156 beats per minute. My zone three, I like to bump this guy up one if these numbers don't match. It's just because the percentages are only, um, they're, they're not rounded. They're not like 10th of a percent or 100th of a percent. So sometimes it's a little off. So my zone three, my zone two would be up to 157. My zone three is 158 to 165. Zone three is a harder aerobic effort or like a marathon pace effort. So tempo runs, that stuff's gonna fall right in there, any sort of steady state stuff. Um, and then zone four is gonna be right below your lactate threshold. So it's gonna be from 166 to 174, and that's gonna be some of your harder work, um, some of your uh, interval work, depending if you're going above or below lactate threshold, um, like your 10K efforts, that sort of stuff is gonna be right around there. And then anything above, uh, they, he develops them into different zones, 5A, 5B, and 5C. I just know if you're above, you're above. Um, and then you're looking at some different um, interval work, like you might be doing like five by five minutes or something. You may be above into zone five uh, and then be able to recover down past lactate threshold. So those are gonna be my exact zones. And we'll talk more about heart rate zones uh, specifically in another video. And now you can calculate your heart rate zones. There's no excuse not to use personalized heart rate zones now because you know exactly what to do. You're gonna run that test, your half hour lactic threshold test, warm up, you're gonna do the 30 minute bit, you're gonna take the last 20 minutes, get the average heart rate, plug it into our calculator, and you're good to go. 
in future videos or you can always ask me we're going to talk more about heart rate training specific zones and all of that but that's going to come for another day if you have any questions you can find me all over the place find me on twitter or at instagram at ryan knapp or you can email me ryan at miles to go endurance.com thanks so much for listening please leave any comments uh, in the comment section or ask any questions have a great day